I have become somewhat of a FNAF songs expert as of late. Over the last month or so, I have reviewed well over 100 FNAF songs live on this channel, and I do not plan on stopping. Although some of these songs are really playful and plenty are straight up bad, I have actually been amazed at many points by the sheer amount of artistry displayed by some of these creators, and even if the FNAF scene makes me want to unalive myself in Roblox at certain points, I can't help but respect the insane creativity some of the material in this space contains. And today, I am here to talk about FNAF songs once again. Today I will be ranking every FNAF song created by YouTuber Daco from worst to best. Daco is arguably the most prominent creator in the FNAF space, and he is someone I respect a lot. He's pretty goofy and silly, but I really like the guy for being such a positive member of this community that has done so much good in his time in the spotlight. And if there is anything I am familiar with in regards to Daco, it is, weirdly enough, his discography. I have listened to every song on his channel like a hundred times, so I feel more than qualified to do this ranking. But of course, as always, this ranking is just my opinion and my thoughts and nothing else. I mean no disrespect to the creators and tracks that I criticize, and I don't expect everyone to love the same tracks that I do. With that being said, let's dive into the wonderful fnaf discography of Lewis Dawkins, aka Daco. I don't know how to talk about this song. I don't know how to explain the strange thing about this track in a safe manner. Darkest Desire 2, aka It's Spreading, is so strangely homoerotic for, like, no reason. The entire runtime of this song is Daco calling himself the Master, guest appearances having gay awakenings, most notably CG5, and the chorus chants, Oh, it's spreading. I am fairly confident this wasn't the intention of this song, but you really cannot listen to this song and not pick up on the sexual tension between Daco and everyone else there. With that being said, this song is annoying and cringe and stupid. The vocals are cartoonish to the point of being frustrating to listen to. The lyrics are, again, strange beyond reason, but also kinda stupid and also overly cartoonish. The production doesn't do anything special to save the listener from what is being said and how it is being said. And the guest appearances are like the biggest missed opportunity ever. I'm not the biggest fan of CG5 or Dehusta, and they have both worked with Daco prior anyway, but Daco got DA games on this just for him to do what feels like basically nothing. This song is really weird and irritating, and is the only one on this list that I don't really see a redeeming quality in, so that's why it's going to be at the very bottom. Count the Ways is such a disaster and I do not understand how people like it. With that being said, I love this song. Count the Ways is an abhorrently bad song, but it's so ridiculous in its awfulness that I just find it so funny. For one, the voice is so ridiculous. I have no idea what vocal effect was conjured up in a lab somewhere and applied to this track, but it is so grating and horrific. And secondly, the playful energy and the way it emulates a children's song does not enhance the experience of listening to it, it just makes it painfully annoying. That type of thing can work if it's applied to something that's meant to appear child-friendly and then subverts the viewer slash listener's expectations by making it dark in a more subtle way. As far as FNAF songs go, to stick to the topic, I think Lights On by Kyle Allen Music is a good example of that approach. But Count the Ways takes itself completely seriously, and is meant to be dark and gritty, but it just cannot be taken that way, because it's very sound, the core of what it is, feels like a goddamn joke. Count the Ways also has such a stupid premise as is, so when it's put into song form, I hate it more. The entire premise of this track, and the story it's based on, is Funtime Freddy listing different ways he could murder this woman. Again, I find it funny, but it is very stupid and boring. What Daco does really well with his other songs based on the Fazbear Fright stories that we'll talk about later, is explore the story in creative, subtle, and at least pleasant ways. This song just takes the listing of different murder tactics, and runs with that and only that. Count the Ways isn't the worst song I've ever heard, and with how many FNAF songs I've listened to, I could name at least 10 that are worse, and it managed to get out of the very bottom of this list, but it is still pretty terrible. This is probably going to be one of my hotter takes of the video, but I have never cared for Make Me a Hero. And this is not my anti-security breach bias. Pizza the Action by Stupendium and Total Insecurity by Rocket are both beyond fire. But Make Me a Hero, although I don't hate it, just never did much for me. Although there are plenty of bad FNAF songs, I do genuinely believe there are a lot of tracks in the scene that are oozing with personality. Even some of the bad ones are so distinct and feel so expressive. But Make Me a Hero feels really generic and bland. 
Again, this isn't a song that I hate, and I can have an okay time listening to how colorful this track is, but by trying so hard to replicate the 80s aesthetic, I feel like all creativity was lost in the process. The production, again, is colorful, but it's very simple and bland, it doesn't feel like much passion was put into it. However, something positive I will say about this track is that it is one of Daco's best vocal performances ever. This song, as it is only about half a year old, does really showcase how far Daco's abilities have come. I don't have that much to say about this song because that's how boring it is to me. It's not that bad, but I just find it very bland and personalityless. In Darkest Desire, Daco takes his approach to rap, and it falls flat quite a few times. I'll start off with what I like, that primarily being the pre-chorus. The actual chorus is whatever, it sounds fine, but it's written pretty badly, but the pre-chorus is actually pretty fun to listen to. The drums are very harsh, and Daco flows over the instrumental pretty nicely in this section. It's, it's a joy to listen to. The verses are where my problems lie, because Daco cannot write raps. These bars are goofy as shit, and there is no flow here whatsoever. What's in this cassette, I'm willing to bet that it's a mechanical figure brought to ears for the listener. Why do these flows cut off so abruptly, and was there no better option for a rhyme than figure and listener? Miracle, how empirical, don't know anything quite hysterical. Man pulled out the lyrical miracle unironically. I'm totally fine with songs that are just fun to listen to, especially when they're like, fandom songs. But this is an attempt at writing a rap song, and the lyrics don't flow together in an even remotely satisfying way. And I think the best way to write a rap is to structure a good flow. The production is the main savior of this track. The production, unlike the performance and lyrics, is fun to listen to because it's crafted like an actual song. The glitchy effects at certain points are cool, the drums are consistently nice, the effects done to Daco's vocals are generally passable. However, I need to interrupt some of my nice comments to talk about the part where Daco whispers to himself as Glitch Trap. I don't need to hear Daco roleplay whispering into my ear when I'm listening to music. Darkest Desire is not a terrible song, but it has more lows than highs, so it doesn't rank highly in my book. Make Your Move is probably the strangest premise for a song Daco has come up with. Make Your Move is an ultimate custom night song, but it is specifically about Daco trying to beat 50-20 mode. On this track, Daco sings as himself, and CG5 sings as Scott Cawthon, who discourages Daco on his journey to beating 50-20. This premise isn't so bad that I want to rip it to shreds, but it is so bizarre. When I listen to this song, and I watch this video, I just imagine Scott watching this and thinking, wow, I really did drive this man insane. So yeah, the writing is goofy, but something I actually really like about this track is the instrumental. It is both relaxing and upbeat, it has a very pleasant and exciting sound. But something that I do want to bring up, and this will come up again when we talk about Like It or Not, is CG5. This is seemingly an extremely hot take, the numbers speak for themselves, but I really dislike how CG5 sings. CG5's singing voice is boring, bland, and so not expressive. Even when CG5 tries to sound more energetic, they just sound sleepy. Why does this moment feel so boring and uninteresting, as it bleeds into a really intense, upbeat part of the song that's meant to, like, encapsulate how dramatic the theme is? It's because CG5, one of the two characters in our silly little narrative, sounds so unenthusiastic that it is borderline embarrassing. This song is okay, and is carried by its production, and although Daco's performance is totally acceptable, CG5's vocals and the writing makes it an overall unenjoyable experience. Like It or Not has the exact same problems as Make Your Move, which is really weird. The writing is really, really bad. The verse literally starts with, one, two, three, four, five. You think you can survive. This does not develop into anything. This is just, this is just the bar. The chorus is, don't run away, just come to play. No fun today. This is what I have to say. Again, doesn't really develop into anything. This is just so lazy, and it isn't even performed well. And just like Make Your Move, CG5 delivers every single lyric with minimum energy. It's even worse on this track for some reason. CG5 actually sounds like he is freakishly sleep-deprived on this song. It frustrates me at worst and bores me at best. Outside of the actual writing of the lyrics, more so focusing on the premise and concept of this track, it's fine. It's bare bones and simple, and I definitely think you can do a lot more with a FNAF song about this badass conclusion, but there's nothing bad about it. This song doesn't do an amazing job at capturing the intensity of the ending or the emotional angle of the characters, 
but it doesn't gross me out or offend me, which is something. Dako's performance is also surprisingly decent. I say surprisingly simply because this is the first song on Dako's channel. CG5, who is meant to be like a legit singer, is absolutely the worst singer on the track, so Dako takes a W here, even if he didn't do anything significant. If you're wondering what makes this song better than Make Your Move, I think it's just a slightly more consistently enjoyable listen. As much as I like the instrumental of Make Your Move, I really have to actively try to ignore the goofy premise. Like it or not, although the writing is awful and CG5 still kinda sucks on it, has solid production and a simple enough concept that I don't need to ignore how dumb it is. I think Make Your Move and Like It or Not are pretty on par, but Like It or Not is the easier listen. Into the Pit is the first track on this list that I would deem a legitimately good song. Turning the Fazbear Fright Stories into songs was a really good move on Daco's part, in my opinion. Although it did result in Count the Ways, it's generally a great way to explore some more creative ideas for music, and it makes Daco's discography more distinct in the fandom. And Into the Pit is a pretty solid song adaptation of the story. It's written in a way that explores the experience of the protagonist in a genuinely cool way. I'm actually pretty surprised and impressed that Daco and DeHusta managed to take the story with the time-traveling ball pit and write it in a really interesting and engaging way. The instrumental, production, vocals are all generally nice to listen to. My main issue with this song is the vocal effect used during the main chorus. It's really goofy and annoying and doesn't add anything of value to the song. But overall, Into the Pit is both a pleasant listen and a legitimately impressive adaptation of the Fazbear Fright story, so although it is far from perfect, I do quite like this song. Out of Stock is an absolute banger. I don't really have any strong feelings on this one, I just think it's really fun to listen to. Daco has one of his best vocal performances ever on this track, he manages to harmonize surprisingly well and hit some pretty impressive notes. And the instrumental in this one is one of my favorites, despite how simple it is. The guitars are harsh and feel fucking amazing to listen to, and the way the drums align with the bass and vocals just make me want to scream along with this song. Not sing along, scream along. This is also one of the most well-written tracks in Daco's discography. All the lyrics do a perfect job of working as both a FNAF song and also just an actually enjoyable song. And I'm not going to claim to be an expert on the Out of Stock story, because this is one that I have not read, but from everything I know, much like Into the Pit, this song does a pretty decent job at condensing the best elements of the story into song form, which isn't an easy task, honestly. We've seen how that can go wrong and count the fucking ways. Out of Stock is just a really solid banger, with basically nothing weighing it down. There are just three songs that manage to be even more flawless in my book. I absolutely adore To Be Beautiful. This is the only FNAF song that I have an entire video on, so you can just watch that if you want to hear everything that makes me love it so much, but I will give you the gist. This track is so aesthetically pleasing. From the vocals to the production, the overall atmosphere of To Be Beautiful is so haunting and eerie, it's nothing like any other FNAF song. The performances from both female vocalists on the track are absolutely beautiful and feel so fitting for the theme and style of the song. The production of this song fits its theme so well, and that's what I talk about the most in my video on the subject. Dee Husta and everyone that worked on this one was able to perfectly encapsulate the eeriness of the story in such a simple yet effective way by making the beat drop so gross and metallic sounding. And the lyrics of this one are absolutely perfect. Eleanor and Sarah both sound broken and haunting, and Eleanor sounds delightfully deadly. And the way it ends with the song that Eleanor actually sings in the story is a great detail that I appreciated a lot. Again, I have a whole video on this song if you want to watch that, but overall, To Be Beautiful is just an absolutely outstanding track to me, and there was really no way it wasn't making it into the top three of this list. Fetch is a shockingly well-structured and excellently produced FNAF fan song. The way the production of Fetch just immediately sets up the perfect atmosphere is genuinely astounding. I have no idea what made the funny dog story make Daco and DeHusta go all out with this one, but I am not complaining. Daco's vocal performance on this track fits it perfectly, and the reverb applied to his voice gives this song such an epic and intense sound. The layering of the vocals are also important to take note of. You can tell a lot of time was put into crafting this song to be something really grand. The instrumental is ridiculously fantastic, with so many different instruments and sounds being put together to create something that just feels so dramatic. It's so heavy and bassy, and produced like something that would make it onto the Billboard Hot 100. I am not even joking about that, that's how well produced this track is. And the lyrics on this track, although it has a couple low points, such as the line, 
I never did wish this upon me, so why me? I cannot take that shit seriously. Overall, the lyrics actually do a really excellent job at adapting the fetch story into a song that can be both enjoyed musically and also understood from a story perspective. Again, I think Doc of doing these songs based on the Fazbear Fry stories was a great decision. Fetch is an intense banger that is crafted ridiculously well. Again, I do not know what made them go in so hard for the weird dog story, but it was so worth it. This is a beautifully produced song. Daco does very well on it. It works with the story. Fantastic track. Lonely Freddy is a shockingly beautiful song that makes it into my top three FNAF songs of all time. Daco's more gentle performance on this track is genuinely gorgeous and sets up the song for a more emotional angle that is executed so well and fits the story it's based on perfectly. And the ukulele instrumental is not only a pleasant sound, it's so different from what I expect in a FNAF song. Then there is the drop, where Daco harmonizes, the vocals are layered, and the drums come in strong. This moment is one of my favorite fan-made FNAF anything. It is produced beautifully and crafted in a way that displays a sincere emotion so genuinely. The more emotional angle to Lonely Freddy is something I never expected going in, but I couldn't be happier with the result. I don't really listen to FNAF songs to feel anything, I generally look for either a hardcore banger or a unique and gritty aesthetic, but the feelings caused by this fantastic track are so sincere. This song is produced perfectly, the song is written perfectly, Daco delivers possibly his best performance on here, and it was all crafted to create something I never would have expected to hear in this space. Lonely Freddy is beautiful, tragic, intense, gorgeous, it's everything you could want. And that is why I can say with confidence that it is the best song Daco has made up to this point. Oh.